Not entirely sure how to calculate the wire diameter and aperture size of your wire mesh? Well, let's solve that problem, shall we? Stick around. Hey, what's up? My name's Andrew Kotlar, and it's time to do some math. The wire diameter and aperture size of the mesh are possibly the most important specifications to be aware of. It's because these specifications ultimately control how durable and accurate your wire mesh will be. For over 150 years, WS Tyler has been a prominent woven wire mesh supplier, helping countless industries with harnessing the capabilities of their wire mesh. So here's what we'll go over. What wire diameter is, what aperture size is, how wire diameter is tested, and how aperture size is tested. The wire diameter used to construct your wire mesh plays an integral role in the durability and lifespan of the mesh. The thicker the wire diameter, the more durable your mesh will be, but too much of a good thing could be a bad thing. You should be mindful not to implement a wire diameter that will hinder the mesh from delivering the best results. That said, the material you're working with ultimately dictates the wire diameter you should use. If you're working with material that's super coarse, corrosive, or abrasive, you want to implement a thicker wire. Also, using a wire diameter that's too thin may result in damaged mesh, which will lower its performance and potentially damage other components throughout your operation. On the other hand, if the material you're working with is considered fine, like confectionery sugar, wires that are too thick will affect the stability of the mesh openings, which commonly results in plug mesh openings. The aperture size that you specify dictate how easily individual particles will pass through the mesh. This is really important when you're trying to manage the flow rate of a mesh filter. Now the aperture size you should use depends on the particle size you want to allow to pass through, as well as the volume of waste buildup that'll be present. So using the right aperture size will help ensure adequate flow rate is maintained while making sure all the necessary particles are screened. If you don't, unwanted particles will pass through and blinding could happen throughout the mesh. Two methods can be used to find the wire diameter of a piece of woven wire mesh. The one that you use ultimately depends on the physical properties of the mesh. If the edges of the mesh have yet to be cut or the tips of the wires are exposed in any way, you can determine the wire diameter by using a micrometer screw to measure on a single wire. If the aperture size is big enough, you can use various other instruments. And it should be noted that before the weaving process, the tolerance of the wire after the weaving process cannot be calculated but the nominal wire diameter is obtainable when the empirical weight formula is used. To make finding the aperture size of a wire mesh cloth easier, it's recommended that the measuring row method is employed. It's all about taking the number of pitches within a designated length. You then divide this length by the number of pitches to identify the average pitch. By subtracting the wire diameter from the average pitch, it allows you to identify the aperture size. So when you're attempting to identify the arithmetic mean value of the aperture width, it is critical that the amount of pitches that are analyzed represents an adequate representative value. I'll also say, after that mouthful, that when aperture widths are between 16 millimeters and one millimeter, 10 pitches should be analyzed. If the aperture width is 0.1 millimeters or smaller, then 20 pitches should be analyzed. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about Woven Wire Mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click the second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name is Andrew Kotlar and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.